Welcome to how to make a Stuart triple expansion engine run. This is part 8. Making a pair of mahogany engine bearers to lower the height of the engine in the boat that is currently being built. Cleaning up the high pressure slide valve using my whetstone, adjusting the valve and packing the gland. Plus checking the intermediate expansion link travel. First the low level engine bearers. These are cut from a piece of mahogany and shaped on my one inch belt sander. They are sat on a piece of kitchen roll because what I need to do now is varnish them to make them waterproof. I'm using Ron Seal hard glaze polyurethane varnish for this because it's quite good stuff. I will give these a second coat and also I need to varnish them underneath but I can't do that all in one go. Why am I going to the trouble of making engine bearers? This is quite important. The engine needs to have a solid mounting and the one that came with it is no good for in the boat because it makes the engine too tall to actually fit in the area of the boat where it's going. So I'm making some bearers that should be quite simple to fit into any type of hull. Apart from the current wooden base being too big, it's really difficult to work on the crankshaft area of the engine because of the design of it. By using this design of engine bearer, I have full access to the eccentrics at all times for doing things like removing the eccentrics and refitting them and timing the engine. I like to feature clips in my videos showing things like paint drying, but this is a bit different. It's varnish drying instead. And while the varnish is drying, I'm going to have a look at the clearance between the expansion link and the valve fork on the intermediate cylinder's valve gear. And I am really pleased to say that this valve fork is correct. So I don't have to take everything apart, because believe me, this is in a very bad place to do that. When I wind the screw reverser back and forth, the expansion link doesn't collide with the valve fork at any point in the travel. Quite unlike the valve forks on the high pressure and low pressure cylinders, which collided with the expansion links as I moved the screw reverser, to fix this, as I've shown in a previous episode, I filed the edges to radius them. This clip shows the screw reverser at the other end, and there is still plenty of clearance between the valve fork and the expansion link. With a lot of model steam engines I come across, frequently the expansion link collides with the valve fork. One solution would be to make the top part of the expansion link a bit thinner, but then it would be weak. The secret is make sure that the valve fork's deep enough. I'm going to use my whetstone to clean up the first of the slide valves. And the first thing to do is to apply some oil. Don't get confused with wet with an H and wet without an H. There is a difference. You don't use water, you use oil on these. Here's the slide valve as I removed it from the engine. And as you can see, the front face isn't flat. It would eventually wear in because it's not really that bad. Unlike steam engine piston valves, slide valves generally wear in. They don't wear out unless you forget to oil them. Here I'm rubbing the valve up and down the whetstone. You should really do it in a figure of eight movement, but you can do it across the direction of travel because the valve will soon wear in. In this clip you can see a considerable difference after a short amount of rubbing it on the whetstone. This once again is the before shot. All I did was carry on rubbing it up and down on the whetstone until the face of the valve was a uniform colour. That's enough of that, my hand aches now. The next thing to do is to fit the valve spindle, which in turn is sat in the slide valve. A quick word of caution, when doing this it's really important to fit the gland onto the valve spindle before fitting it all together. And now for the important part, plenty of oil on all of the moving parts inside the steam chest. Here's a quick tip, it's far easier to pack glands when you have the cylinder and the steam chest and the gland in your hand as opposed to being fitted to the engine. The space limitations can make it difficult. Here I'm showing the fitting of a piece of Teflon coated yarn into the gland. I'm using a very small screwdriver for this and it seems to work okay. Wind the gland material around the valve spindle then push it into the gland. And then, being very careful not to over tighten them, 
fit the two nuts that secure the gland in position. The best way to do it is to tighten up the nuts, not too tight, just tight enough to nip the gland so that it's difficult to move the valve fork up and down and the valve spindle. Then all you have to do is back off the nuts a quarter of a turn and you should find that the valve spindle moves up and down smoothly. Take your time with this, do not over tighten the gland because you can do a lot of damage to the expansion link or other parts of the engine. This is a really fiddly job, fitting the eccentric rods. In this case, I'd fitted the eccentric straps to the wrong eccentrics. It is really important to make sure that all of the eccentric rods are at the same side relative to which eccentric is on which eccentric sheave. It sounds complicated, it isn't, it's just a very fiddly job. Because taking them on and off is difficult as there isn't much room to work. I'm not currently timing the engine, it's no good timing it at this stage, not until it gets mounted onto the proper bearers. But I must confess, I couldn't resist an initial tweak. And I'm pleased to say that the 4BA grub screw through the thickest part of the eccentric sheave is really gripping the crankshaft. By slackening the grub screw, I can rotate the crankshaft freely within the sheave. And when it's in the right place, I simply tighten the allen key. And that locks it in place. At this stage, I thought it would be a good idea to refit the high pressure cylinder cover. But in reality, it wasn't a good idea at all. Here I'm showing the principle of how I adjust the eccentric sheaves. The sheaves are machined as a match pair with some offset built in, which generally causes a lot of problems. I may end up having to make some more eccentrics, but we shall see. In this clip, I'm refitting the collar that is the end stop for the screw reverser to prevent the valve gear from moving too far. There's quite a long way to go yet. I'm going to take the engine apart a little bit more than you see it here. And while I'm at it, to finish the job, I will make some new cladding using a piece of baking tin, which is a great way of doing it. More about that in a future episode. That's it for now. I'm moving my Myford lathe from the main workshop into my smaller workshop as I found the Warco M180 a little bit small, not centre height wise, just length. I'll shoot some footage of the workshop transformation. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.